Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network. We're coming to you live and in color right now from somewhere in North America. Uh, I'm Scott, and Martin Patella is our health coach. How are you doing today, Martin? Awesome. Doing great. Ready to share the pearls of wisdom, whatever the heck I'm able to give to the world. All right. So the news, unfortunately, we've had another tragedy. We've had a whole pile of people, over 50 people shot and killed. More than that are shot in Orlando, Florida, and our hearts go out to everybody who has a loss. And uh, we just, uh, you know, that's really a sad, sad state of affairs. Totally. Yes. Uh, well, what do you do? I mean, this is now about the it's 30th, becoming regular. 50th, it's a regular, right? There, there are over 300 mass shootings. By mass, we mean more than four victims in the United States every month. So they, they, it's just ongoing. It's just that the really big ones now will make the news. Of course, 50 dead, that's just a regular day in Baghdad. Yes. Yes, that's right. It's all relative, isn't it? Uh, totally. Um, but still, I don't want to diminish the loss. I don't want to diminish the anguish. I don't want to diminish the uh, incredible pain that everyone involved can feel. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, the people who have gone through this traumatic event, what sort of leftovers in their psyche this is going to to leave the, the post-traumatic stress that's bound to result from all of this. Yeah, it's a lot of it, for sure. It's more, probably the most stressful situation they've ever been in in their lives. Yes, I imagine. Huh. So, uh, of course, so we I always try to take a bigger picture. I want to try to uh, see it from further back. How, how could I help the most? the most people in this difficult situation, right? How could I have prevented this? How could we have gotten not to this place? Yeah, I was going to say there's sort of two parts to this. One is how do you prevent this sort of uncompassionate behavior and unempathetic behavior? And then now that it's happened, how do we help the people that are most, uh, yeah. most damaged? Yeah. And so here we have the perfect example of where the emergency medicine works. Doctors have learned the most in the, in the wars. Like the greatest advances of Western medicine have come after the First World War and the Second World War, where the doctors have been in the field able to just practice brutally simple medicine, just make progress because they had to like never mind whether it's safe let me just try it what yeah, that, I that's right. this, this person's uh, pretty much smashed apart as it is and anything is better than where they're at right now right so that's that's the fastest ex acceleration in the technology and in the technique and in understanding and, and of course it's wonderful i mean how great that was that that trauma center in Orlando had just not long ago run a uh, drill where they uh, were actually stress testing themselves on active shooter or shooting in progress lots of problems so they really knew what to do and the outcome is great uh, I think they lost I don't know if they lost anyone yet Right, so all these people that they may be shot, they maybe have you know bleeding or broken bones or whatever. They come in, they're able to be patched up. Yeah, whoever they brought them alive, I think they saved everyone, which is phenomenal. I mean, hats off to the skills of the surgeons and the technology that they're able to deploy. Right. But what they were not able to do is prevent this. <clears throat> I don't know if the dude that did the shooting was a psychiatric patient. He might have been. He might have been on some over-the-counter, or he might have been self-medicating, or he might have been in the care of a psychiatrist. I don't know that we'll ever hear about it. It's a common, common knowledge out there that uh, 
people who are on psychotropic drugs have significant chance of uh, having suicidal ideation, meaning that they want to do it to themselves, but some of them go over to the other side and want to just go out in a blaze of glory. Which, it goes right back to Columbine in Colorado, where the guys were on, I think it was Paxil, one of them, and uh, I think a version of Prozac for the other. And they both were going off the drug. Like, the biggest swings that happen usually are when, when you're messing with the dosage, either increasing or decreasing. And, you know, as you were talking, too, I had this image in my mind of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, the movie, Robert Redford and Paul Newman. It's the end of the movie. There's no way out. And they just run out of the place, guns a-blazing. And, unfortunately, hail of bullets. A hail of bullets. That was the end of them. And uh, But they went out in a blaze of glory. And, of course, in these situations, you wonder from the perspective of the person that's the shooter, are, is that what they're thinking? I'm going out in a blaze of glory. And in their mind, are they seeing all these innocent people and children of, uh, you know, no. sons and daughters? Or are they seeing, you know, this um, a faceless enemy that they're just going out in a blaze of glory and then getting shot and dying themselves? I really actually think that everyone, everyone, thinks of themselves as the good guys. Even, you, you know, the, the, what we call the enemy, in their eyes, they're the good guys and we're the, whatever we are, you know, right. the, the other party. Right. Is the, uh, is, is whatever the bad guy is. <laughs> I uh, recently shared on Facebook a video, uh, a, a retired, FBI agent, maybe CIA, I don't know, one of the services agent was speaking. Uh, she's a young looking woman, but she's already done 10 years in the field. And she was saying, everybody out there sees themselves as the hero of their story. She says, I'm out there, I'm in, I'm talking to the uh, jihadists, the guys. And they're saying, you know, those movies that you Americans put out, like the Star Wars or the Independence Day or whatever, it's always a band of rebels that a rises. Small together. band. Small band of very creative, under equipped rebels who rise against the empire, the invading force, the overwhelming. Well, in this story, you guys are the empire and we are the band of rebels. Yeah, it's and very we hard. We see ourselves as, as the, uh, the good guys. Yeah, it's very hard to think of the United States as the underdog in any military endeavor uh, right now. Not on the earth. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you just wait when uh, Darth Vader shows up. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be the rebels. That's right. Well, but okay, not not to take anything away from it, but so what I'm trying to say here is that I don't know if this specific fellow, the last shooter, was in psychiatric care and was on any of the mind altering psychotropic drugs from the uh, Baxel, Prozac, uh, Zoloft, whatever category. But it is really common for them to create significant mental problems for people. Right. right. So, so what are what some are things, things that people can do? Um, people like him? Yeah. yeah. Well, I speculate that he was deeply conflicted because he, for what I've learned about it, was probably a uh, fellow with sexuality that was telling him that he wanted to do the homosexual acts. But his religion and his upbringing was telling him that that is absolutely not acceptable sure road to hell and damnation yes because yes. many of the people that were that go to the pulse often say that they've seen him there many times yeah and he was friending them and uh, seeking hookups and whatever so he probably was trying to explore that side of life 
And he was a good looking guy. Yeah. Which I don't know if that contributes or not. Anyway, well, what would I do? If I had a chance to talk to him, I'd be telling him about the gift. Okay. The gift, smart minerals. We have had Pharaoh Brenner on a number of times. Pharaoh spent 30 plus years in his career as a behavioral psychologist and therapist, helping people get out of terrible situations, be it a uh, addiction or destructive mental patterns or such. And um, so this cute little bottle, one ounce in size, all you need to do is take one drop of it and you can drop it either on your chest, on the breastbone where your thymus gland is, or it's okay to take it in the mouth, under the tongue. And, um, and this, this liquid is based on Ormus minerals, which is the recording medium into which Pharaoh is able to record the message of having your stuff together, having yourself emotionally balanced, being essentially at the success end of a multi-year relationship with a psychotherapist. So you take a drop of it and all of a sudden you have your act together. Wow. And this thing lasts about four hours. And uh, at that point, especially as you're taking it, you should be uh, expressing a statement of intent. I personally, myself, I use, I love myself. I just, that, that subsumes everything. Mm -hmm. When I love myself, I'm not going to be destructive to me and I'm not going to be destructive to others. Right, that's a good place to be. Absolutely. And um, of course, you can use it as a student. It'll give you, uh, I don't know, freedom from stage fright, freedom from performance anxiety. So anybody who needs to step in front of a group of people and perform, right? Like uh, artists of every sort, they really enjoy this. Cool. So would it? Have, so let's flip over now to the other side. So in other words, what you're saying uh -huh. is, is that there are tools that we can use to help us maintain a proper balance. And we assume that when you go and shoot 50 people, you're not in a proper balance. That's a fact. I mean, I believe this. Uh, the other thing I would suggest uh, we look at or we consider is a uh, supplement. You can nutrate away brain imbalances. The aggressive behavior uh, is caused by a specific imbalance in nutrients. Interestingly, uh, I met the inventor and formulator of this product called Empower Plus. Uh, Tony Stefan is his name. And uh, he was explaining when he was sharing the story how he got to make this, that uh, he had a family that was bipolar. His wife was bipolar and actually ended up killing herself. But his daughter and his son were also bipolar. Wow. And so it's it's a combination of genetics and nutrition, and it's causing, of course, bipolar means that one day you're depressed, and next day or next moment, you're manic. So you have moments when you feel bulletproof and, uh, and immortal and uh, unbelievably powerful. And the uh, next moment you feel like, you just can't get out of bed, you're so depressed. Now, you don't have to be swinging from one side to another for this to help you. It will balance your brain and help you get out of the imbalance that keeps you in, in the hell of the mental problems. So anyway, Tony was uh, sharing his plight with a fellow who was um, who was a feed salesman. He was selling specialized feed for hogs. And he said, you know, we see this in hogs. They just go mad. They just attack each other. They bite each other's ears and tails and they're just 
they're just, what's the word, aggressive towards each other in, in a very destructive way. So let me see if I can help you figure out. I don't know anything about human nutrition, but let me tell you what I know about hog nutrition and uh, what we could put together. And um, and they did. So it took some years, and uh, Tony developed this product that first saved his daughter, then his son, and uh, then hundreds of thousands of people. And then this was a Canadian, or still is a Canadian company, they got attacked by Health Canada, which is the equivalent of the FDA. And they told them to just cease and desist and that they do not care one bit whether people will hurt themselves or suicide or whatever. You are not allowed to sell a product that is a nutritional product and sell it as a drug and claim that it heals a mental condition. I remember reading the book about that, Martin, yes. and uh, it read very much like a detective novel because the first part was, of course, the journey to discover what the nutrients are and what the combinations of nutrients are for humans that was working so well for the pigs. Yeah, that's And right. then, of course, some of the products or some of the ingredients were classified certain ways so that you weren't allowed to bring them across the border uh, into Canada from the United States. So surprisingly enough, you could get it in the United States, couldn't get it in Canada. Well, and, I thought the problem was that they were bringing it for this specific purpose, which is to help people. Yeah, and uh, and then when they, the next part of the book, of course, is the fact that it's a court, it's like a court case, right? It's like- Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. It, 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 went to, it went to the court and it was it was in front of a judge, not a jury. And the judge actually invoked the Good Samaritan rule, which is this. If you find yourself in a situation where there is another person in grave need of your help, and you do not, you are guilty, and you're going to be punished for it. So anyway, the judge invoked this and told Tony and his company, that not only they are going to continue, but that they must never stop because they are now in the position of the Good Samaritan and they must bring it in. So anyway, Health Canada had a black eye and this company is now continuing successfully, along. successfully running in Canada under the label True Hope. And in the United States, this product is available as Empower Plus. And uh, anybody who wants it can easily get it and help themselves to balance their brain chemistry. And I only wish that somebody like um, Robin Williams had access to it or many of the others wonderful people that have ended up taking their lives just because they couldn't stand the medication they were put on. Yeah, for sure. All right, so let's flip it over to the other side. We have all these people who have lost someone that they love in a very dramatic, tragic way. Uh, would things like the gift or Empower Plus help them? They would. Well, especially the gift because that helps you dealing with any emotional trauma. But I would also suggest that uh, something like emotional freedom technique would be an excellent tool for dealing with this sort of issue. For sure. I would I would use that. Neurolinguistic programming, EFT, any one of the instant techniques that you can use to clear the trauma out of your body. And of course, then the most common trauma relief, I mean, if, if it gets bad, right, we can use CBD, cannabidiol, that helps to calm the overactive brain. That's in the hemp oil. Yeah, in extract from hemp. And then uh, we do have a product that's used by people who have a full-blown post-traumatic stress problem, which is called cortisol ease. The, the problem that evolves and develops is that you have um, high cortisol in the afternoon instead of in the morning, and you can't sleep, and you're jumpy, and you're uh, um, having 
wrong reactions to inputs. Like, you know, a typical guy comes from uh, from the war zone and, uh, I don't know, a uh, an exhaust backfire down the street and he's ready to either crawl under the table or maybe pull out the gun and shoot somebody. Or, um, I don't know. Well, anyway, the stimulus will trigger a, a wrong kind of reaction, an oversized reaction. So the the cortisol is, is uh, capable of uh, dissolving the excess cortisol. So over a fairly short amount of time, just days, uh, it will bring the levels back to a place where it is um, manageable. So people can sleep normally or have a, an appropriate reaction to the stimulus instead of the inappropriate um, oversized reaction that you would norm normally get as a, as a person suffering from the traumatic reaction. So Martin, in your experience, like as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, okay, someone's had a traumatic emotional experience the a lot of the doctors will say take this drug yeah they'll put them on uh, psychotropic drugs that will essentially cut off their emotional world they will essentially turn into a, a zombie yeah and then you have the other the other the like i'm thinking of three sides here i hate, hate to say the other but that's like go to the psychiatrist or the therapist or someone like that and then what you're talking about now is a nutritional solution to the issue Right, because when you balance your brain, you're uh, going to be less likely to have a problem. Right. I mean, there's a there's a fourth part to it, which we call metabolic typing. And uh, when your uh, body fluids push off into overly alkaline, you become despondent or even depressed. When they become overly acidic, you get short-tempered, aggressive and ragey so he could have been overly acidic yes he could have and that's when you have things like road rage i mean we see it every day every city on every highway right yes. some guy that's just he, he thinks off. you did something against him or for whatever and he's just like pissed yeah. off yeah the the reaction is essentially oversized inappropriate reaction to the input I mean, you, you see it at, at workplace. You you drop a paper clip on the carpet in front of the boss, and he just goes off and starts red face yelling at you for your incompetence. So what we're talking about here are degrees. Yeah. Fortun hopefully and fortunately, usually your boss doesn't get red faced and overcompensated to the point where he pulls out a gun and shoots you. But, but still, the, the injuries that that kind of behavior will create is you, you can traumatize a person, right? Mm -hmm. Like somebody who needs to have the job, has to have the job, can't get away from you, will put up with it, will just say, yes, sir, yes, mm -hmm, yeah, I'm so sorry, and whatever. But on the inside, you're being injured, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. And, and my point was just that it was it's we're just talking degrees it's the same thing it's just yeah. how long it takes you to get to the point where this guy in Orlando was right and we have the famous going postal going postal yeah I don't know if you remember but there was this one postal worker who shot up his place of work somehow I don't remember the details anymore but yeah. I remember that there was a shooting taking place and the guy essentially lost it and shot several of his colleagues it's called going postal now it's called going pulsal oh uh, no <sighs> yes well anyway so we have this illness in the society that we're not discussing in the perspective or from the perspective where it would actually offer solutions we're just dancing around the problem, shuffling around the symptoms from a tactical perspective instead of going strategic, instead of discussing what caused it and how we could address it. Yeah, how different would someone be if they were told on a constant basis, like, you know, every time you watch TV, you see drug commercials, how 
to ask your doctor about psoriasis or psoriasis or whatever it is, and your life will be good. And what if we had those same types of messages going on? Balance your brain and you won't feel so much rage and you'll feel like you're more in control and more of yourself. And then all of a sudden the person buys some gift or cortisol ease and then they're saying, well, you know, now I'm more balanced. I'm living a good life. Yep. Better choices. It's always in the moment, right? Like it's, it's in the moment of decision. Will you make the right choice? And one, you know, the depressed person is most likely going to suicide. Take their, they take their own life. Sometimes uh, in extreme, they just go out and say, no, you know, if, if I'm going, I'm taking with me as many of you people who have harmed me, who have damaged me, whatever. As I can. You know, that German Lufthansa pilot who took an entire airplane into a mountain in the Alps. I mean, that's going out in, in style. Yeah, a blaze, not necessarily of glory. Right. No, of course not. But it's so sad, right? And there he was in care, in care of multiple medical professionals. He was taking these drugs that, well, they're not drugs, they're drugs <laughs> that uh, were supposed to help him. Well, they didn't. And yet, I, I mean, of course, I cannot make the case that he would be just fine on Empower Plus, but I think he would, be, would have been a lot better off. Yeah. Well, we know it didn't work. Yes. And unfortunately, we don't seem to have as many opportunities to see what does work. Right. And so why are we not having a conversation about that? Why are we not having a conversation about what pharmaceutical, pharmacological substances were involved? And was this person being balanced emotionally with the emotional balancing tools like EFT and, and nutritionally with supplements like the Empower Plus and with emotional vibrational tools like the gift? How could we get this into the national conversation? I would, I would like people to share this, just say, oh, hey, there is a way out. Yeah, because we're not talking about something that's theoretical. There's lots of people that have used these products and had amazing results with them. Absolutely. So, I don't know. I don't think you can. I, I don't think I can ask anyone to say, well, talk to your congressman or talk to your senator to change it. They will not. We just need to leave their game. We need to get out of that picture. Everyone who wants a better life, just leave that whole thing behind just quit join the new world the new reality there you go that's our reality restoring vitality to you and to the planet you've been watching and listening to the life enthusiast online radio and tv network i'm scott Patton. he's martin patella the house the health the house coach the health coach uh, Martin, if somebody wanted to talk to you in a little more detail about some of the things we've discussed today, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, call me, 866-543-3388, or visit the website, www.life-enthusiast.com. Do not bring a gun. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.